Well, good morning, y'all. It is a beautiful, beautiful day here in Kentucky, and we are getting ready to uh, do historical markers here in Marshall County, and I want you to join us. We're going to learn um, some about the um, Civil War um, history of Marshall County, Kentucky. Um, there's some state parks. There's lots of interesting people on the list. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. And stay with us. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on these to keep them going. We're having a blast and we hope you are too. See you at the end to see what you thought. We're outside of Benton, Kentucky for this marker for Arthur H. Davis. One of the earliest landowners in the Jackson Purchase, Davis represented Callaway, now Marshall County, in the state legislature in 18, 1824. Davis also served as Justice of the Peace and Sheriff of Callaway County. He installed the first court of Graves County and served as a general in the Kentucky Militia. This marker is outside the Marshall County Courthouse in Benton, Kentucky. And it says, totalitarianism is a constant threat to our freedom. We would like to salute these men for giving the supreme sacrifice that we may keep that freedom. 1961, Vietnam conflict, 1973. We're here in Benton, Kentucky at H.H. H. Lovett Park. This marker, it says, Civil War Action. On March 23, 1864, two days before the Battle of Paducah, detached forces of Confederate General Nathan B. Forrest's cavalry coming up from Columbus, Mississippi, and Union troops, both searching for horses, met by accident near here. In two skirmishes, which took place three, it which took place, three were killed in the first engagement and four in the second. Burial was in the old Gilbert Cemetery. We are in Benton, Kentucky, outside the Marshall County Courthouse. This one, the county's named in 1842 for John Marshall, who lived from 1755 to 1835. Chief Justice of the United States from 1801 to 1835. Principal founder of judicial review and of American system of constitutional law. Area first settled about time of the Jackson Purchase in 1818. The first church, West of the Tennessee River in Kentucky it was started by Reverend H. Darnall Baptist in 1819 on Soldier Creek, formed from Callaway County. And we are still in Benton, Kentucky at the H.H. H. Lovett Park. Henry H. Lovett Sr., born in 1882 near Jonathan Creek. He, he graduated from Southern Normal School, now WKU, in 1902. After teaching in rural districts, he was elected head of Benton Schools in 1905. Four years later, he helped establish the first high school in the county, Benton High School. He was first superintendent in Kentucky to have his curriculum approved by the Kentucky Department of Education. All right, continues. Later, he became an attorney and was active in the Kentucky Bar Association, served as circuit clerk, county judge, and Commonwealth Attorney, appointed First Circuit Judge of 42nd District in 1954. He served until 1958. Donated the land for Benton City Park, named in his honor. Active in preserving Big Singing Day. Died in 1971 and is buried in the Benton Cemetery. We're in Benton, Kentucky, and this is for James R. Lemon, 1848 to 1919. He was the owner and editor of Benton Tribune and Mayfield Messenger and author of a Marshall County his history lived here. Lemon in 1884 also founded Big Singing Day. This evolved from Southern Harmony, a hymn singing custom popular in early 1800s continuing today. Using only four shaped notes, it simplifies music reading and has no accompaniment. House is listed on the National Register. And I would say that that is, I guess, the safe frame house. It's right in front of it. All right, we're outside the Marshall County Courthouse in Benton, Kentucky. This marker says Kentucky Rider, 
Born in Benton, 1918, Joe Creason often spoke of his birthplace as the only town in Kentucky where I was born. He became an outstanding journalist. His daily col column, Joe Creason's Kentucky in Louisville, Courier Journal, won him wide recognition and acclaim. Creason, a goodwill ambassador, wrote fondly of his native state. He died in 1974 and buried at Bethel, Kentucky. All right, this marker is in Benton, Kentucky at the H.H. H. Lovett Park. It says Benton, Kentucky, the only town where I was born, Joe Creason, 1918 to 1974, and it was placed here by the Rotary International Club. outside the uh, Marshall County Courthouse for the, the marker that goes with this cannon. Um, it says 1861 to 1865 over 400 Confederate soldiers and over 200 Union soldiers from Marshall County served during the war between the states. This cannon is dedicated in their memory. All right, we're outside of Benton, Kentucky for this marker at Shelby Broadcasting. It's for Shelby McCollum. Born in Tennessee in 1917, he moved to Benton in 1939 to manage the old Benton Theater. He served in the Army during World War II, then returned home and opened several drive-in theaters. He founded WCBL AM December 1954 and operated it for the remainder of his life. He served as a state rep representative from 1952 to 60 and 1962 to 68 and speaker of the house 1964 to 68 later served as first district railroad commissioner and was a member of KET authority and Pritchard commission of higher education he was first chairman of state legislative ethics board created in response to the Watergate scandal and presided over passage of the first Civil Rights Act in a southern state. He died in 1987 and is buried at Fuchs Cemetery. All right, we are um, between Draftonville and Benton, Kentucky. We're here for this marker. Spout Spring in June 1842. Nine justices met at James Clark's home near the spring on the west side of Old Benton Paducah Road and organized the first Marshall County Court. They were James Brain, Enos Fawn, Joe Gilbert, John McElrath, Robert Elliott, William Rice, Absalom Smith, Joseph Statton, and James Stice. Fires at the county clerk's office destroyed the details of the meeting. Right, we are in Calvert City, Kentucky, here at Oak Hill. For this marker right here, Calvert City was named for Potilla Calvert, who built Oak Hill in 1860. He gave the land to railroad companies so that the railroad might run by his home. He also saw to it that provisions were made for food and shelter for those who chose this site for settlement. Calvert was one of the founders of Calvert City's First Baptist Church. Looks like they have maintained this home very nicely. We are in Fair Dealing, Kentucky. For this marker, it says Inundated Site. Birmingham, six miles north, was one of the oldest settlements in Marshall County and a major early boat landing. Settled 1849, named by British settlers for Birmingham, England. Town covered as Kentucky Lake formed. Kentucky Dam built 1938-44. The Birmingham Cemetery was relocated at Bryansburg. This TVA project acquired 35,133 acres in Marshall County. We're near Aurora, Kentucky, and this marker 
It's for Cherokee State Park, proposed in 1946 and opened in 1951. The only state park in Kentucky developed for African Americans. Closed by 1964 after Governor, Governor Combs' 1963 executive order ended segregation in public facilities. 300 acres, beach, rental cottages, kitchen and dining hall, and picnic area. 2,000 attended the opening. Black families near and far vacationed here. And there is another side to this sign. So I'll go over here. Known as the State Park for Kentucky's Negro citizens, Cherokee Park was a product of Jim Crow segregation. Built when African Americans fought to integrate recreation facilities in Louisville and other parts of Kentucky. Some thought park overdue. Others thought Cherokee an obstacle to obstacle to full equality. Alright, we're walking on the causeway um, over Kentucky Lake at Ken Lake State Park. Thought I'd give you a little view of just how beautiful it is out here. You can see those leaves changing and, and the colors. Awesome. We're coming here for this marker right here. Get a nice little walk down here to get it. Jackson Purchase. 8,500 square mile area. Former tribal lands of Chickasaw Indians. U.S. paid $300,000 for tract in 1818 after negotiations by, by General Andrew Jackson and Government Governor Isaac Shelby. Ordered by Tennessee, Ohio, and Mississippi rivers, now com comprises Kentucky's eight and Tennessee's 20 westernmost counties. All right, we are here um, at Kentucky Lake. Um, this marker is Egner's Ferry Bridge. Egner's Ferry Bridge, spanning the Tennessee River, opened in March 1932. The bridge was named for the ferry lo located here in the mid-1800s. Milton Egner, who owned the ferry, also operated stagecoach and freight lines on both sides of the river. In the late 1930s, the Tennessee Valley Authority began building a dam across the Ten Tennessee River to create Kentucky Lake. Officials close to closed Egner's Ferry Bridge in 1943 to raise the structure above the level of the new lake. While the bridge was closed, the ferry was brought back into service. The dam was completed and the bridge reopened in 1945. Let's see pictures there. This marker is for Ken Lake State Resort Park. Ken Lake State Resort Park is one of the most popular resorts in Kentucky. The idea for the park originated in the mid-1940s when the Tennessee Valley Authority recognized the recreational potential of newly created Kentucky Lake. The Kentucky Lake Association, a group of local citizens, worked closely with state and federal officials to plan the future park. Kentucky Lake State Resort Park, now Ken Lake, joined the state park system in March 1948. President Harry S. Truman signed the papers transferring 1,795 acres owned by the TVA to the state of Kentucky. By 1955, Ken Lake had a hotel, bathhouses, cottages, picnic areas, roads, and parking areas. The park was the most modern in the, in the Kentucky system. The first state resort park built on a major reservoir, Ken Lake set the standard for future resort park development. And there's some postcards from Ken Lake. All right, guys, what'd you think of Marshall County? Kentucky is beautiful right now. The the trees are changing colors. Uh, the it, it's just that little bit of crispness in the in the weather. It's beautiful. I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. And stay tuned 
for the next episode of Historical Markers.